Louisiana fish fry products, bringing the taste of Louisiana home. By Bomber Foods, the makers of Crystal brand products, a complete line of sauces and fine products that bring out the inherent goodness of every meal every day. That's Bomber Foods, makers of Crystal brand products. And I'm Bev. We believe in a trim and terrific lifestyle and entertaining with flair. We're cooking and entertaining all the time, whether it's a casual outdoor party for family or a beautiful, fabulous dinner party for business clients or friends. We're going to keep it simple, make it affordable, and most of all, we're going to have fun. We're going to spark your imagination, and we're going to share with you all our favorite recipes, menus, some great entertaining ideas, and lots and lots of tips. Food, fun, and friends, the trim and terrific way. That's what it's all about. Let's start with brunch. Sounds great. You know, we all have such busy schedules that brunch is a great way to entertain. It's casual, it's perfect for any holiday or occasion, and I like it because it's on weekends usually, and it gives you a little more time to prepare. I'm going to show you a great make-ahead menu so you can enjoy your guests and not spend the whole time in the kitchen. We're going to have a bread pudding florentine, cheese grits, some wonderful quick breads, and they're really all my personal favorites. Holly, while you're dreaming up the recipes, I'm going to talk about the decorations. We're going to take a clay pot and we're going to take a 99-cent flower, blooming plant that you get at the, at the plant okay. store. And, we're, and every day we're driving by. You know, we're going by the grocery, we're going by the plant store, so this is real simple to put together. I'm going to show you an invitation idea. I'm going to show you a tablescape using the same ones. And then I'm going to even pick a few greens from your garden, and we're going to have a simple but spectacular table. We're going to make a bread pudding florentine. And I love it because it's an overnight casserole, which means you have to do it ahead of time. But it's also a savory bread pudding, which I think is very nice for breakfast time. All we're going to do to make this is I have a mixture of egg and egg whites with skim milk, and that's how I sort of give it that healthier twist. Just beat this together, and I also add a little Dijon mustard because I think it really complements the spinach. Holly, could we use egg beaters if we had to? That's perfectly fine. Okay. You know it. I like it when you get healthier. Healthy. And all I've done for our topping is we take um, onions and mushrooms and garlic, and you saute that. And you have some frozen spinach, just two packages of frozen spinach and that you, you thaw. Right, too. you thaw and squeeze it dry, and with a tablespoon of flour. And we're just going to layer it. That's really all this is about. And as on the bottom, I have French bread, and you just cut your French bread. This is when you have that day old French bread and you don't know what to do with it. Here you go. Now, if I don't have French bread, could I use wheat bread or some other kind of bread that I've used? You can. Italian. You want some, right, some kind of Italian, something a little coarse. Okay. And then it's basically, Bev, just layering. So we're going to just put our spinach and onion mix. Easy. Easy and not too much time. And then our next layer, which I'm going to let you help me with. Okay. There we go. And it also has such pretty color. Is Swiss cheese. And I use reduced fat cheese because the fat free cheese, we all know, it balances, it doesn't melt. But we want to make it a little better for you. So to me, the reduced fat cheese has all the flavor without all the fat. So, so just sprinkle start? a layer of that. Okay. And then after you do that, all you do is you put another layer of your French bread on top and then you put your egg mixture over that. And this is really basically the finished product. Mm. The beauty about this recipe is you do need to make it ahead of time. So you can make it the night before and you put it in your refrigerator. Now let's say you're so busy, you never have time to get everything done, which is usually my case, is what you can do is make it that morning, but you want to give it about two hours to let the egg mixture soak into the bread. Now when you have it ready to go, and let's say you make it in a glass dish as we have here, mm -hmm. you don't want to put a glass dish into a hot oven. You always want to start with a glass dish and put it into a cold oven. You want to bake this about 350 for about 45 minutes and let's say we pulled it straight from the fridge, maybe ex uh, add extra 15 minutes to it. And that's it. It looks great. Well now I'm going to show you how to do these easy decorations. We're going to take the clay pot 
and uh, the, our plant, which in this case I used Binka. Uh huh. We're going to unpot it and just pop it into. So simple. Now, Holly, you know, no one RSVPs anymore. Right. So I love to call friends about a week or two before, and then when I find out who's in town, I hand deliver the invitation. Oh, Beth, there is no way I am hand delivering invitations. Everybody says this, but I promise you, Holly, if you invite two other couples to the party, you're going to exercise class, you drop I, off. I can handle that. You're right. You know me. You're oh, right. No, it's, it's easy. So then you add a little um, uh, invitation. Uh -huh. And again, when you say call people and ask them, they never remember if it's 7 or 7.30. They don't remember what to wear. So on here you have the party particulars. And everybody looks at that potted plant and smiles all the way until they get to your party. You're right. It's something you want to keep around a long time. Then we're going to take these and we're going to use varying sizes of pots, potted plants, and we're going to go up and down the table. Cute, cute, cute. So, and I, oh, I'm also going to use a few little greens from your garden, Aspidistra and Fatsia, but I'm going to show you that later. Okay. I know you like to dig in my garden. <laughs> That's right. It's okay. Right. Well, that sounds good. I think next is what I'm going to show you is some wonderful quick breads. On to quick breads. Quick breads are perfect for the busy cook because you don't have to do all that kneading and rising. You and mean I don't have to use that yeast? No, you don't have to do yeast at all. In Good. fact, quick breads use baking soda and baking powder as leaveners. Great. So really, you want to have your oven preheated because once you mix it all together, it's going to start cooking. Uh, I'm going to show you two of my favorite breads. We're going to have a cranberry yam bread and a banana bread. Holly, I always have those overripe bananas that are just sitting there. Can I use them for this? Oh, yes. They make the best banana bread. Great. But it's what you need to do, because sometimes it's not the right time to prepare your breads, is just peel them, put them in Ziploc bags, peel your bananas, put them in Ziploc bags, and put them in the freezer. And then when you have time to make your banana bread, because the ripe bananas are so perfect. And the one I'm going to show us today is the cranberry yam bread. I just love sweet potatoes, and this bread is so perfect because you have the natural sweetness of the yams and the tartness of the cranberries. So easy to do. All we've done here is this, I've mixed up our eggs and our a little canola oil and sugar, and then I'm putting in a can of yams that I have drained and mashed up. Now, if I bake some from the night before, we always seem to have some left over. Can I use those? Oh, that would be perfect. Peel lot, them and chop them. A lot of people them. don't realize the versatility of yams. Now, we're just adding this to our dry ingredients. And all your dry ingredients are flour, cinnamon, allspice, and a little baking soda, which is our leavener. With quick bridge, you don't even have to mix it with a mixer. You really want to just sort of do it gently till it all sort of comes together because if you overmix it, it could really make a tougher bread. So you want it to be a little lumpy? Yeah, those okay. lumps. This is one time it's lumps. fine. <laughs> and then we're going to add in our cranberries. And I've used dried cranberries today, which are just, you know, available year round. But you know, when we have Christmas or when we're entertain around the Thanksgiving holiday, yeah. holiday time, we could use that. Oh, absolutely. The fresh perfect. ones would be fresh great. Fresh ones. And I usually buy them and they stay perfect in the freezer for up to a year. Now, this is all your batter is. No Looks calories great. if you taste it either. Looks and great. then all you do for your finished bread, as I've done, I've baked it at 350 for about an hour. And see how it has a crack? A lot of people go, why does it crack? It's very characteristic of a quick bread to have a crack down the middle. Mine go like this, Holly. So a crack is good. A crack is good, but I, look bad. Not for you, Miss Perfect, I know. No, no, no. I have to admit, <laughs> every now and then I get this bread that sort of gets this hole in the middle. But you know, I never say, don't ever start over. Take the stress out of your life in the kitchen. So you know what you do? You just slice it. I slice the bread and then a little extra in the middle, I just get to eat it. Holly, I've got a better idea. We're still going to use it on our table. You take our potted plant that okay. we have an extra, a little cellophane, and we're going to pop it right into the center of your bread and we're going to use it. Now, if you're using clay pots in the, anywhere near food, you need to boil them for 20 minutes to make sure that they're sterile, but this will make a fabulous center. You've turned my disaster bread into a center piece. <laughs> I thought I was going to get some little ends and good. Okay, one other reason I love quick breads is because you can make them ahead of time. They freeze so beautifully, and you could do a variety of them. I like to use these little pans in different shapes, and really one recipe makes a lot of pans, so you get a lot more mileage out of your bread. And so what you want to do is can bake it at 350, but instead of an hour, adjust your time. And these little ones take about 30 minutes is all. Now, Holly, while you're cooking, would you make me six extra ones? It's no problem. We because need to have favors for all of our friends that are coming. Okay, well, I'll let you have one of mine as a favor. All right, now you need to help me with this. Okay, one. tell so me what's We're going to take cellophane okay. again, and we're going to pop that right into the center. Okay. And we're going to wrap it. I'm going to tie it up, and you want to do this so it looks pretty at the top, so you let those little pieces fly out. 
Oh, it is. So you could see the bread even. Yeah. Then now, we're going to take... Hey, what? I'm, I'm sorry. Say, can we use saran wrap for this? You could, but it's just that. not as pretty. Okay. I mean, you really need to use the cellophane. And you know, you can get it at any store that you that sells uh, wrapping paper or whatever. Just that, ask them for cellophane. That's perfect for me. I can pick it up at the grocery store. <laughs> okay. Now we're this far, and I'm going to okay. show you another cute idea. I know you love roses, Holly. So we're going to make a special little extra touch for this. Everybody knows how to get these water picks at your florist. You fill it with water. And then you wrap it with Galax leaves. She's so clever. Again, you get these in North Carolina or the florist. Uh -huh. And then we're going to pop this in. And we're going to have a beautiful favor for our friends. If you hold that for me right there, okay. I'll tie the bow. Oh, that looks so pretty. Now, not only do we get something pretty to look at, you get something good to eat. Exactly. And we're not telling them whether they get cranberry or banana because they're both yummy and it'll be a big surprise. And then when they'll they go bite home. over it anyway. That's right. So there's our favor for everybody to take home. Well, and then I think that's about everything. Let's go to the table and I think you have some finishing touches. Yeah, great. Bev, it looks just absolutely fabulous. I am so excited. I think our friends are going to love it. Right, and here we have what I made. This is the bread pudding Florentine. And then I made cheese grits, which you really could just use the quick grits, and I've added cheese to them. And you know what I like to do is sprinkle paprika on top just before it you serve beautiful. it. beautiful. And really, serving doesn't have to be complicated. Look, I use Pyrex dishes, and these go straight from your oven to your table. And everybody has Pyrex. Absolutely, and Holly, we've put it on, this on a silver tray just to make it look pretty. But if you don't have silver, don't worry, just use whatever you have in pottery. We're taking a little bit of this curly parsley, and then we're going to add a few more tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, to make it look pretty. And then these are the greens that I cut from your garden. We've got fatsia okay. and aspidistra, and we're going to add just a few of those to add a little more decorative touch. Now, I love the napkin rings because I collect them all over, and you have made a wonderful dish where we only need a fork. So we've wrapped the fork already, and then the plates, and we're ready to go. That's right. We're keeping it simple. And the breads, we made those ahead of time. And the way you want to serve your quick breads, I find as easy as already have them sliced so everybody could just take a portion. And then for drinks, um, mimosas, they're just always wonderful. And you see, I have a little strawberry for the garnish. But if you want to do a little different twist, how about a pitcher of smoothies? Oh, it sounds good. And everybody has a favorite smoothie recipe, but to tell you the truth, keep it simple. I just went up to the local smoothie place and bought them. Well, you know, too, if we wanted to make a New Orleans twist, we could have gin fizz or some other kind of New Orleans kind of drink that would be kind of neat. But I noticed that fresh fruit, Holly, it looks beautiful. Well, you have to take advantage of the seasonal fresh fruit. Not only does it add color to your table, but it adds nutrition as well. Well, I'm looking right there at your bread with a hole in it. <laughs> My and disaster it's bread. Just looking beautiful. And we have the favors for everybody to take home. I think we got it. And you know what? Buffets are such a great way to serve a brunch because they're easy, they're informal, and everybody can eat whenever they want. And you know what? When you're finished, you get to plant all of those plants in your garden to remember this beautiful day. No, you. You get to help me plan all the I'll help you. I'll well, help you. I think I hear everybody coming. I know. It's the doorbell. Let's go. Holly, how many times are we having friends over before the big high school football game or college game or before a concert? Lots. I think we ought to be in jeans and boots, and let's have a Southwestern flair to this party. I know you're going to think of great appetizers for us. You're right. There are so many times my husband says, everybody to your house. Right. So I have three simple but great tasting appetizers. We're going to do chili boats, which are a super pickup. And then I have this artichoke dip recipe that people just rave over about. And it's so simple, but I think they can't figure out what's in it. <laughs> and then to keep with our theme, we'll start with some shrimp salsa. Great. Love it. Yeah. Now, let's start with our chili boats. Now, this is just such an easy recipe, and people put so much stress on themselves. Keep it easy, use convenience items, and then add other ingredients to it, and it makes a personal flair. You didn't make these rolls from scratch? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. In fact, all you want to do, I wouldn't even want you to have to do that. Go to your local bakery, and you can find them in the, you know, just where the bakery goods are. You can find them prepackaged. It doesn't matter. Don't, you know, worry about what kind of rolls. All you do is you split them in half, which I've done, and then you're going to remove your tops, which is very simple. You know, when we do this, and I usually get my kids to help, 
It's like you want to make sure and match the right they top back together. with it. We'll keep them together here. Then all I've done here is this, I've taken a can of turkey chili without any beans. And Bev, I need your little help. Okay. Press a little dents on to the bottoms, on the bottoms. Part of the boat. Oh, on the, the bottoms. bottoms. Okay, bottoms. here we go. And uh, gets out your frustrations. And you just put a little chili on each one. Okay. And I could use a, a regular a chili recipe that I love if I didn't want to use it. If you pans. happen to have chili in the freezer, that's great. And then uh, I'm going to use shredded cheese. You could buy shredded cheese, obviously, you know, in the refrigerator section. But what I like to do is when I have time, buy a block of cheese because it's a little less expensive. I, you know, grate it on the grater. I put it in Ziploc bags, and I have shredded cheese to pull out whenever I need. I think she sounds a little like Martha Stewart. Oh, well. <laughs> so all we're going to do is actually put this like this. And if you have anybody help, it's not a big deal. You're going to put your tops back on okay. and then this is our finished little chili boats the great part about this recipe is make them ahead of time keep them in the refrigerator if you're going to serve them in a few days and if you're not pop them in the freezer oh. and pull them out and it also makes wonderful snacks when you're ready to eat them all you do is you can take them directly from the freezer and put them in the oven at 350 and you just want to cook it about 15 minutes till the cheese melts and a little brown on top simple as heat and eat well, I've got a great idea to put them on a wonderful tray. Okay. We are going to use a skillet for our centerpiece. This is just a black iron skillet, and we're going to put this oasis in the center of it, water-soaked. Now, Bev, what is exactly is oasis? This is a green foam that you get the florist, uh -huh. and, and you just it just makes it so that when you arrange your flowers, they stay exactly where they are. Great. So great. we're going to show you this one that we've got over here that's a little bit finished. So cute. And here's our skillet. We've put Galax leaves around the base. Again, you get those at the florist. And then I love kind of tall, spiky flowers. So we did iris. Bells of Ireland, and then some Godesia. And we really could sort of use the colors of our team we're rooting for. Absolutely. Be theme-oriented. You would approve. <laughs> I would love that. And then this is just a bandana. Just uh -huh. We're going to tie around here for color. And Holly, I think if you handed me a few of those uh, tomatoes, some of the things that you might have put in chili. All right. Here's then, some garlic. We definitely good. include that we'll in chili. Add a little bit of garlic Oh, and I think here. these jalapenos add so much color, too. Oh, I love the red ones. So we'll put a few here. And that's just a little pop of color. So then this is going to go in the center um, with your chili boats surrounding it. So right. I think that'll make a really pretty look. Super idea, Beth. Now for this artichoke dip. It's probably one of my most popular recipes, and it's probably one of my most easiest ones. All you do is you take a can of artichokes, and you drain them, and you chop them. Can I use those marinated ones? No, no, no. Not this time we don't want none of the oil. marinade. It's not necessary. <laughs> and, and it really doesn't matter. You can buy them whole, quarter, whichever is least expensive, because you're going to chop them up finely anyway. And then you just take a half a cup of non-fat sour cream. OK, and the next ingredient, I know everybody's going to hold their nose, a half a cup of fat-free mayonnaise. <gasps> Holly, can I use the reel if I really wanted to? Well, I prefer you not to, but if you do Reduce. like the reel, you could use it, right, the light or the low fat. In fact, I really like the light because it's sort of in between, but if you are one of these that have to have real mayonnaise, at least use it in the quantities of all my recipes. And then we're going to mix this up, and here's the secret weapon. She's got it. All you need to do is take a, a package of your Italian dressing mix, or you can buy cheesy Italian dressing mix, garlic Italian, whatever flavor, and just... Put Ready it in, for it? add that to it. And really, you don't have to add any other seasonings. The oh, beauty about this recipe so is you can make it ahead of time. Also, in fact, it's better. It gives all the flavors time to get together. Uh, you could double it, triple it, whatever. And there's nothing to it because all the spices are already in the dip. It looks great. And it doesn't look too expensive either. No, it's not. Really it's good. good. But Very now tasty. that you've been talking about artichokes, I think we need to use a fresh artichoke here. And we're going to make, I love the glow of candles at a party. So I thought we'll make some artichoke candles. So all we have to do is slice off the bottom to make sure that it's level. Now, did you cook the artichoke first or no? No, it's just absolutely okay. picking up from the store. And then you take it and you peel back, push back a little okay. bit. And you really don't have to, right now, Holly, it's going it, to, this has a few little prickles. So if you want to use gloves while you're doing this, it's easier I to do. I don't want anything to happen to these gorgeous fingers for sure. <laughs> but the hard part is, is okay. that this is really needs a little strength. So your exercise class. Right, I've been working out with weights, Bev. You want my help? That's right, and I've been doing the Pilates. Deal, we're so we're, we're gonna, there. So you just start here, and you go uh -huh. up and down all okay. the way around, and then you just pull it out. OK. And after you do that, you've got your finished finished product. I see. I see. And we're going to add just our wonderful votive candles. You pop it into the center. 
And there oh, you go. That is just absolutely precious. So, now, oh, I know that shrimp salsa's coming up. I can't wait for the shrimp salsa. We're going to do the shrimp salsa. And salsa is the number one condiment nowadays. And you know what's great? If you have leftover of the shrimp salsa, use it with chicken, fish, or whatever entree you're serving. It just adds a little extra touch. This is another easy recipe. And all I've done here is I've started with um, two 28-ounce cans, the big cans of diced tomatoes that I've drained. Now, Holly, if I wanted to use the kind with the chilies in it, could I add those already in the can? Absolutely. Okay. Just add a little spice to Love it. Those. And here, all we're going to do is add ingredients. In fact, Bev, you could help me. We have uh, green onions, okay. which add, and corn. And I like to add corn because it adds texture. So and we're pretty. trying to include more grains in what we're doing. And here's a little jalapeno. And really, with the jalapeno, I like to use the pickled uh, jalapenos. I just keep them in the refrigerator. There's nothing to them. Garlic. Garlic. Yeah. garlic. And this is a little cumin and oregano. So it's what we're doing with our canned tomatoes. We're adding all these fresh ingredients so it's not even necessary to use uh, fresh tomatoes. And then we're going to add shrimp. Um, really, for this recipe, you might as well go to your grocery store and buy the peeled shrimp already, you know, just in the market. And then you can take them home and cook them in a saucepan, a skillet, just until they turn pink, maybe in a little margarine, season it with salt and pepper. If you have extra boiled shrimp, or if you happen to have shrimp in the freezer, it doesn't matter. Mm, We're just going to add great. this mm -hmm. and see how pretty it is. And then I saved the last ingredient um, of cilantro because it really has a distinctive flavor to it. Well, you know, I say cilantro. And I say cilantro. But I love it. Okay, well, if you love it, I'm going to use it. But yeah. it does have a distinctive flavor, and sometimes people don't like it, and you could leave it out. But since you love it, I'm putting it okay, in. Okay, great. And if you're not familiar with cilantro, and this is one time I suggest using a fresh ingredient. As I showed you before, I always cook with dried herbs because that's what everybody has. But if you're not familiar with cilantro, you could find it in the grocery section right by the parsley. It's sold in a bunch. And look for the uh, leaves that are bright green and not wilted. A lot of people have them potted just outside, you know, for their little Absolutely. kitchen garden. And you want to make this ahead of, oh, yeah. Get we the, need any of this? See, that was your job. Juice? This is a little lime juice, actually. Lime. But you could use lemon. Either one would be great. Oh, and you just want to let it sit. Great. And that's all there is to it. Great. And really, and as it marinates together, it even gets better. Oh, it looks wonderful. Well, now, we need one more little deal here. I've okay. got, we're, we're wearing jeans and boots. So I right. thought, let's do a boot arrangement. Okay. Now, we're stealing, oh, borrowing boots from our husbands or our children. And we're going to add some marbles into the base. Now, why are, you, why are you putting marbles in there? So that it won't tip over. Because we're oh, going to put okay. a vase in the center of it. And actually, we're just using a glass with water filled in it. And you just pop that in. And then you see it needs that for stability. Oh, yeah. Great idea. I and see then it, yes. we're adding our favorite bright southwestern sort of flowers. We started with curly willow, sunflowers, Gerber daisies, anything that's just bright and real colorful. Now, I have another great idea. Do you know when, Holly, we're asked all the time for our children's school or church, oh, right, to do a fundraiser? Absolutely. And they go, we need 30 arrangements, and we have a zero budget. Zero. Get those boots out, borrow all the boots, go get wonderful. You don't even have to use curly willow. You can just use a branch. And remember the flowers we made in the third grade? Bev, I never made paper flowers in third grade, and I'm not making them now. <laughs> I don't do I don't not, I'm not crafty. You know that. She can get somebody in the committee to do it. Okay, okay, that can go idea. in instead of fresh flowers. Good so idea. really a cute idea. So now, we're ready for the uh, big deal before the game. I think. Let's go check it out. Let's go. Bev, you just outdid yourself. But Holly, you did too. This is spectacular. Well, and it was so easy. I like to offer a variety. We have the chili boats. They're hearty. They're great pickups. And then I have two dips. One, the shrimp salsa is a little on the chunky side. Mm. And the artichoke dip is smooth and creamy. You know, the one that everybody just raves about. And your containers. You've used those wonderful, bright-colored cabbages. They're great. And they're so easy. You just sort of hollow them out. And the cabbage is coarse enough that it holds the dip so easily. Well, you know, I love to use kind of a variety. I notice what you've done with all the color there. And the height I love with the boot being the much taller one, then down to the skillet, and then your beautiful display of food. It's really neat. And the artichoke candles, of course, that glow that I love. You do. I love them. And so anyway, that's a neat touch. And, and I have to ask you something. I noticed we have red bandanas, and yeah. I just didn't know. Our napkins are polka dotted and green, but there's no red in them. You know, if you pick up the colors in the flowers, 
you don't have to match anything. You just want a touch of all those different colors. Well, I thought so because they just sort of popped out. And the great thing about this home menu is if we wanted to take it tailgating, we could do it so easily. Or let's say the, the men said, come on, we got to go. We can just stick it in the refrigerator and be off. It's perfect. We got our boots. We got our jeans. And I think we make a great team. I do, too. Everybody's busy. Meetings at lunch are the perfect way to kill two birds with one stone. Everybody needs to meet, and everybody wants to eat. So we're going to make this simple and put the, everything in a paper bag, and we're going to use some Chinese cartons. I'm thinking for investment club, Holly, or garden club, bridge club, whatever it is, this is the perfect way to go. Now, I've got the Chinese cartons, Holly. What can you think good to put in this? Let's see. I'm thinking lunch, light, maybe a chicken salad, and I have this just delicious, it's really one of my favorite pasta salads, and maybe some brownies for dessert. Oh, I love those brownies. Can't uh, wait. You're going to have to wait. So let's start okay. with our chicken salad. And you know, Bev, eating healthy doesn't have to be eating a fruit, uh, you know, separately and a vegetable separately. There's so many ways to enhance what we're doing. And that's what I'm going to do with these salads, to include more fruits and veggies in here. So not only are they going to be packed full of flavor, they're going to be packed full of nutrition. That's why you ca they call you Miss Trim and Terrific. That's right. You got it. <laughs> and we've started out with just three cups of cooked chicken. And this is a great way to turn leftover chicken into another meal. Now, let's say you don't have leftover chicken. Well, you could bake it, you could broil it. You could grill it, my favorite. Or I guess you could buy it. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. You know, keep it stressless. So <laughs> all we're going to do this, and then we're going to add grapes. And I've used a combination of red and green grapes. They look I, beautiful. I need you to prove of the decorating. But your red grapes really have more of your cancer protective substances. But it doesn't matter. We're going to do that mm. and just add some celery. And then why don't you start on our dressing, and okay. all that is is some light mayonnaise, a little lemon juice, and a little soy sauce to add flavor. Now let's say we were making this ahead of time. I would recommend making it just to this point. And then after that, you're going to toss it all together. We're going to add our apples, okay. and you can use red or green, but I think the red add color, and then toasted pecan. And I laugh when I say this because I can remember when my sister went to the grocery store looking for toasted pecans. <laughs> I would too. She didn't find them though. And really toasted pecans, I like to toast the pecans because they intensify the flavor. They add that crunch and give it, your salad even a little more texture. And toasting pecans is really easy to do. All you do is cook it in your, bake it in your oven at like 350 for about 10 to 15 minutes or you could even do in a skillet on the stove. And you're not going to put butter in it? No, you don't need to put butter in there. You want butter in there, but it's not necessary. Really, okay. the whole key to toasting pecans is you want to watch it carefully because they burn so quickly. I know how many times I've done that. So we're just going to, I will toss this out if you'll give me my dressing. And, and just, you know, and to know the way I'm sort of keeping this a little with a healthier twist, we're not just putting gobs and gobs of dressing, just enough to coat it all. So it'll be light and yummy. That's right. Great. Well, uh, while you're doing that, I'll tell you what, Holly, after you finish tossing it, maybe you could put a few little greens in here. Okay. Now, I love those colors. Well, and actually, the, the lettuce, the greener it is, the more nutrition. So the plain iceberg lettuce, it, we, you know, we're used to it. But really, you want to add a couple of, you know, darker okay. greens. Okay. Well, I'll let you okay. start with that. I'll do that. And then we'll show everybody how to put the bags together. We've added right here on this wonderful white bag a sunflower. And again, we're just going to staple it or hot glue it to the bag. Well, you wait, Bev. I'm so glad I don't have to use a hot glue You don't. Okay. You don't. It, you don't it's I easy. Staple gun will be fine. And then we're going to add Holly, all the name on the outside, because everybody's going home with one bag. We're going to add a little bright tissue paper here, because we've only got two salads to put in, and the brownies. And the brownies. Can and so that will make it look real colorful. And then Holly, let's see what's happening with your next salad. Can't wait. This is one of my favorite pasta salads. In fact, I think it's just full of personality with a little healthier twist. <laughs> um, I, and I like this one because a lot of pasta salads are just plain pasta. And as what I've done is I've done tricolored pasta and also I've included tricolored tortellini. Is that healthier because we've got carrots and stuff in it? I wish to say, it, really, there's no extra nutritional value in your tricolored pastas. But you have to add. It's it, pretty. It makes it look nice. And then is all I've done is taken your pea pods or snow peas that you can buy in the frozen food section, and I use fresh broccoli, and I put them in the microwave just till they turn crisp tender, and throw some mushrooms in. It looks like, Holly, we could just put anything in that we had 
that was in the refrigerator. Absolutely, Beth. You know, people say, oh, you have to follow a recipe verbatim, but you know what? It's a great time to clean out your fridge. Throw in whatever's in season right. or whatever you have left. And the dressing is also very simple. All this is is an olive and oil and vinegar with your Italian seasonings in it. And also it has a little dill, Dijon mustard, and a little sugar in there. And mm. we're just going to toss That's it all great. together. And you got to keep me honest, I forgot my cheese. Oh, well, we'll, we'll never we'll tell. No, go ahead and add that. Okay. No. You can add it right now. Everything's simple. We're oh, going to throw it great. all together. And this is just some oh, grated Romano cheese. I'm waiting for that. That's wonderful. We're just going to toss it together, and it's so pretty. And again, make it ahead of time and put it in the fridge. This time, the flavors go through it better if you make it ahead. It really does. Yeah. It really does. Well, I've got a really great idea now for our centerpiece. Okay. Because we're really not going to use flowers. Everybody knows that when you go to the store, you see these wonderful lettuces. Uh -huh. And they're in the little carton, and they're called living lettuces. Now, see, I always thought they were just butter lettuce that I used in my salad. Actually, that's what it is. It's called butter lettuce, but it's living because it's got all the little oh, the tendrils little down okay, here. Gotcha. So we're going to fill a silver goblet a little bit with water, halfway with water. Now, Bev, if I don't have a silver goblet? You can use any sort of a raised pretty uh, glass that you have. And then we're going to pop this in, and then we're just going to open this up a little bit so that you can see how pretty that lettuce is all au naturel. Bev, what? A wonderful idea. You and really outdo yourself every time. We're also going to get to eat it tonight. If we want to use it after we've used it for a centerpiece, we get to eat it. So we'll do three of them. Okay. And then that'll be great. Okay, I'm ready. How about those brownies that I have been waiting for? Attention, Chocoholics, this recipe is for you. Every time I need to make a pan of brownies, this is the recipe I always try. In fact, Bev was at my house one day, and she's addicted like we all are. In fact, I think my kids make this recipe three times a week, and it's so easy. And anytime you're asked to bring like a lot of brownies or cookies, I make it because you make it in a sheet pan so it serves a lot of people. All you do for this is your batter is just some flour and sugar, a little canola oil, and I use cocoa because it's not your saturated fat, but it gives it your chocolate flavor, and a little baking soda, and then buttermilk. Now, not everybody has buttermilk at their house, although we keep it as a staple in mine. And if you don't have it, all you have to do is you take a tablespoon of vinegar or a tablespoon of lemon juice and add it to one cup of milk and just let it sit for maybe 10 seconds. So not long. No, no, and it works perfectly. Lettuce. You bake this, put it in a, a pan and spray it with nonstick cooking spray. You bake it at 400 degrees, which is a little higher, only 15 minutes. And then for your icing, oh. That's the best part. The icing. That's right. All you do here is you take a little margarine and your cocoa again, and I'm using buttermilk, and that's uh, the buttermilk is really what keeps the brownies really rich. Mm. And then we just take powdered sugar and a little vanilla, and we just pour it on, as so. And we'll and just. And then that's going to harden up later. Right, as long yeah. as it sets, and we'll just leave it there. And I'm going to go to my finished brownie that I've cooled already. Usually, I dig in the corners and eat the hot, but I'm, I'm trying to be good. And then, as all we'll do is we'll cut them in squares for your bags. Now, Holly, we can't cut something in squares. We need cute shapes, like hearts or butterflies. Or Do you have any cookie cutters? Um, I think I do. My kids usually have cookie cutters. Yeah, here we go. Oh, Here's a perfect. butterfly and a heart. Okay, so. All right, so what we're going to do is we could spray it a little bit first, just okay. to make sure it doesn't With stick. Some spray, and right. then we're just going to position it, and we're going to push down. Okay. And okay. then you just take the spatula. Okay. And you pull and it you out. Can show them we have some shapes already done. And then here done. are the shapes that are already done. Yeah. Hearts, stars, butterflies. Look, here we go. It's going to be so great. And look, Beth, here's another little heart to perfect. show. Perfect really is easy, and you're so right. It does add a little more it just makes it neater to a luncheon. And then now, you know, we're going to have a lot of little trimmings because it's going to be uneven. I want to share this with everybody. You heard it here. There's no calories in the little trimmings oh, on the end. Right. But guess what we're going to do, too? All those little extra pieces, uh -huh. we can crunch it up and put it on ice cream later. See, and I just usually eat it. Now we have another dessert to serve. Okay, well, this looks great. Can't I guess we're wait. ready to put it in the bags. And go have our meeting. You know, everybody always ends up in the kitchen anyway, so let's just meet here. Perfect. Well, we've already tied the bags with that cute ribbon and everybody's name's on there, so we're ready to go. But I want to show you what we put in here. Just, okay. We've got the cartons, Chinese cartons right. with the food, okay. and all we need to do is add some utensils. This time it's okay to use plastic and paper. And 
you know it's okay to use paper and plastic anytime with me. No <laughs> well, most people say that too. And then I thought it'd be cute to add this little notebook for the organized friends like you. Oh, you know, I like to take my notes so everything's just so. So that's, that's going to go in. And then we already put bottled water in, so that's great. And, and then, you know, a lot of times I like to offer maybe some kind of tea, iced tea, and I have a great recipe for a spicy tea punch that you just take your tea and add cranberry juice, orange juice, lemon juice, and some spices. You know what? You could even serve it in a thermos. That way, if you were going somewhere, we got to keep clean and exceptionally easy. Everything's throwaway. That's perfect. Well, let's take our bags. We're ready to... Check out the stock market for our investment club. And you know what I like about this, Bev? If I have leftovers, which anybody that knows me knows I never have them, I have them already in my to-go container That's to take right. home for another meal. We're ready to meet. And we're ready to eat. <laughs> we can't wait. The whole family's coming over from the grandmothers to the babies. We've got to think of something that everyone is going to love. I think it sounds like we should have a good old-fashioned fish fry. Oh, I think you're right. Everybody loves a fish fry. And, you know, you really could fry whatever kind of fish you have, but I am so fortunate because I have a good friend that goes fishing all the time, and he keeps my freezer stocked with fish. I do, too. Timo Clavery, thanks. <laughs> it makes it so nice. And But it's what you want to do to defrost your fish. If you just soak it in milk, it'll pull out any freezer taste you have, and then, of course, you discard the milk. And then, you know, we like to always marinate our fish first. And I think everybody has their own special technique. I knew mine. And I've seen the two most favorite ingredients are always mustard and hot sauce. And then, of course, you have to batter it. And when it comes to battering, um, it's really not even necessary to make a batter. You could buy your favorite fish fry. It's already seasoned. And that's my, you know, to keep it easy, get your work already done for you. Everybody says cornmeal. Is that a part of what the fish yeah, fry is? Yeah, it is. It is. It's, and they have it all done for you. You don't have to measure out and do it. It's, that's what's easy. Um, and then I want to tell you a few tips about frying fish. I think two most important, uh, what you want to remember is you want to keep your oil the right temperature. Keep it hot enough around 350. And a mistake I know I make all the time because I'm trying to get it done so quickly is you don't want to put too many pieces in at one time because it sort of crowds it and it'll lower your temperature. So take your time in doing it. And Bev, we're going to get everything done ahead of time because you want to serve fried fish hot. That's when it's best. I've heard that you take it out and put it on a paper bag. That's that also help? great. Uh, that's exactly what I do. I take it out and it absorbs any extra grease. So it's really trim and terrific. Right? <laughs> like but it. anyway, <laughs> you know, Bev, usually, too, I'm one of these that has to dip my fish into any, everything. And um, what do you have any idea of, like, to, you know, serve our ketchup and stuff? Well, everybody, so we can make our own sauce. Yeah, everybody loves to make their own sauce. And we have these sort of unattractive plastic bottles. So I think what we'll do is we'll take a napkin. And I'm, Holly, you're going to be able to help me in just a sec. So I'm going to be creative. You're going to be creative. Uh -huh. We fold in the edges All right. so that when you wrap it up, it looks kind of pretty. And does the colors of the napkin have to go with what we're doing? Absolutely. It's going to blend in with the flowers. And once I get this up, I'm going to show you. We'll gather it. And then if you hold that for me right I there, do. we're going to tie it with a ribbon. And I'll show you, we really have a wonderful finished product And I love product it. And I, you right know here. what I love about you is, you know, I'd be finding, okay, I need a yellow ribbon, a green ribbon, and I love how you mix the colors all the time. I'm going to definitely be the more color, adventurous. Absolutely. You can just mix and match, and it's like your own personal Cute. preference. And then when you squirt it out, this catches any of the leaks. And, Holly, we have regular mayonnaise. We have <laughs> ketchup, and we have light mayonnaise. Oh, you're so Just good. For Holly. Look, I'm being decorative and you're being healthy. <laughs> that's what, right. That's it. Speaking of healthy, and you know, while we're all this is going on, everybody has to munch on something. And I have a great recipe for Tex-Mex dip. Oh, it's my favorite, that layered one. It is, and it is definitely oh. good. Now, all we're going to do, I'm going to show you the different layers. And I've started out, this is a little healthier twist version. And this is just two cans of black beans. Now, it looks like we fried beans. It does, but this is even a little, I just like the black beans. I just, I'm one of these that I loves black beans. And you're just going to take your two cans, and you're going to drain them and rinse them. And I've added a little salsa. And then we're going to add some corn because that's adding some grains and it's also giving it a little more texture and color, a little more substance. And that's your first layer. Okay. Uno layer. Okay. Then our second layer is just an avocado layer. All we're going to do for that is you just mash up two avocados and you have a little lemon juice. Excuse me. I'll grab mm -hmm. this. Okay. A little lemon juice and you can add the lemon juice. Okay. And a little yogurt. And we're going to mix that together. 
And that will be your second layer. Now, Holly, if I have that prepared, um, you know, the guacamole that they have in the freezer section, uh -huh. we could use that too? You, you definitely can. As I say, people put so much emphasis that a recipe has to be verbatim. Do what works the best for you. Okay, That's, I know the real avocados would be better. Well, and honestly, the trickiest part about this recipe is to make sure you can find ripe avocados. And if you have trouble, what you can do is put, if you have a few days and are planning ahead, put it in a brown paper bag and tie it and put it in a dark place. Or if you're in a real hurry, which it seems to be my life always, <laughs> you want to put it in the microwave at 50% power, that's half power, just for about 30 seconds and it'll ripen it quickly. I have never heard that. It sounds incredible. Okay, and our last layer. Okay. Now, you know, my other goal in life is you want to wash the least amount of dishes possible. Right. So, I don't think there's going to be one person that's going to notice that this is going to be a little mixed in there. Uh, and all you do for your last layer is you take a little more of your yogurt and your favorite taco seasoning mix. You mm. can even use low sodium. That's great. And we're going to mix it together. And that's all you're going to do and layer it for your third layer. And you see we have it. And as I said, the beauty of this dip, if you were having tons of people, you could make it as big of a platter as you want. Oh, it looks and great. And then for our final touches, all we're going to do here is put on tomatoes. Uh, little green onions, okay. and of course, reduce that Monterey Jack cheese. That's right. And I think this is also so colorful. We eat with our eyes, and you want it to be pretty oh, visually. Oh, just already is jumping off that plate. It looks so pretty. And then as Bev, you know, I, I have been hanging around with you a lot, and I know you always like to let everybody have favors. <laughs> well, so, I've got a great one. Okay, I know Since you we are. love, like, hot sauce and wonderful things in Louisiana, we're going to go ahead and do a wonderful favor with something that costs 79 cents at the store. It's hot sauce, and we're going to then put a little ribbon around it. We've added pom-pom chrysanthemums and carnations, and everybody fusses, Holly, about carnations. They last, and so do the pom-poms. So this is just a cute idea. And then, if you wanted, you could take a little card. If you wanted to hand deliver your invitation, Please, them. <laughs> yes, put all the particulars on that, or use it as a place card if you were having a seated dinner. So let's see what's coming up next. Well, I think to serve with this, I think might as well do a summertime staple of potato salad. Potato salad? That sounds so boring, Holly. Oh, Bev, you haven't tried this potato salad. It has red cabbage and golden raisins and apples in it. Oh, apples. We got another idea. Hold I... on. We're moving this over. Everybody loves to do a little arrangement, especially with the children. So we're going to take these wonderful Granny Smith apples. I'm going to let you steal these ingredients because this sounds pretty clever. It's going to be fun. And what you're going to do is, this is, makes, this is the secret weapon. Okay. You go in and you need a few muscles to do this, Holly. All right. So I'm going to start with this one and then you hollow it out and pull this out. Okay. And then we're going to add to the center of it. A little vase that okay. has to go in the middle because... Now, where do you get these little vases? I mean... This is a makeup jar. Have you been in my makeup jars no, again? No, it's mine, but uh, I... You so start so I'm going to save them so I can do my centerpieces. So okay. you pop that into the center, Cute. and then you let the children do the arrangements. Again, you're using pittosporum, you're using some chrysanthemums, and then in this one, we used... This kind you know of combination. What, then, well, you know, everybody always likes to take a little something home, too, besides your other favorite. Can we give them these to Absolutely. take and let the children gonna, take their own or something We're going like to go that? up and down the table, and then everybody can take theirs home, and nobody can make a mistake. The flower patrol from the garden club is not going to come tell yeah. you it was wrong. That's great. So, That's easy. Great. Well, let me get on to my potato salad, then. Well, now I'm going to show you how to make that not boring potato salad. Great. And it's so easy as well. All I've done is taken three pounds of the red potatoes. And I like to use the red potatoes because they have a little firmer texture. So when they're served cold, they hold together great. And then I'm doing some red cabbage. Holly, do I have to shred all that cabbage? No, I would not include it in my recipe. Nowadays, you could find in the grocery section just a bag of red cabbage. Oh, great. And red cabbage has a lot more vitamin C than the green one. And it's one of those cruciferous veggies. We're going to start hearing about it. But it's something you need to include in your diet for a healthier diet. Uh, then we're just going to put some red apples. And you could use red or green. I was yeah, because the Granny Smith's kind of fun. It's oh, they are. Right now, but that looks pretty. I was doing color-coordinated apples. Yes. <laughs> and some golden raisins. And then I'm going to let you make the dressing. And okay. all this is is some sour cream, the fat-free sour cream, skim milk. Go on. Okay. Mix it together. And this is ranch dressing. Oh, just the ranch dressing mix that you buy in the store. And then we're just going to... Mix that together. This looks like I can do it. It is, and we're going to toss it with your um, 
your, your potato salad mixture. What I love about this, it just has that savory, sweet, you know, this dressing has such a seasoned taste, and you have your apples, which have a little tart, and your raisins. That's good enough. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, just put in, we'll just put as much as you need, and if there's any extra, you could use it as a dip. You want to save some and see how you're doing, or just... No, that's okay. We'll Lop it all that's in there, good. Holly. <laughs> and that's really all there is to your potato salad. Oh, it looks great. And what else do you think you we should serve? Oh, uh, well, I think we have to have a green salad. Okay, just because that it's good. just pretty and yeah. everybody likes that. That sounds good. And then what about some dinner rolls? Um, I have to share this recipe with you. We could always have like a basket of rolls, but my daughter, my youngest daughter, in fact, said, Mom, you have to have the Italian puffs because they were so good and so simple. They look great. And the, all you do is you take refrigerated rolls, like in the biscuit section, the uh -huh. kind you pop open, and these are whole wheat rolls. And again, I tell everybody, take advantage of using convenience items. We're going to add some other good ingredients, and it's going to look homemade. All you do is take your individual rolls, and you dip them in fat-free Italian dressing. You roll it in Parmesan cheese oh. and sesame seeds. What I like to do, I have them prepared. I keep them in the refrigerator. And right before I need them, I just pop them in the oven, 350, for about 15 minutes. Golden brown. Oh, they're like an Italian oh, they look addicting fabulous. Rolls. They're good. So I think we have all our... Menus, our fish is marinating. We just need to go outside and get going and fry it. Okay, let's go. Holly, this fish fry was so simple to do. And it was so much fun because everybody helped. Well, the kids helped us with the apples and the flowers. Uh -huh. And then I even got them to help us label on the sauces. And I'm so impressed. Light mayonnaise. For Miss Trim and Terrific, we had to do it. And then we have these wonderful hot pink sheets that we've used as a tablecloth. That's great. And we're also going to keep cleanup very simple. We're going to use paper goods. And choose your favorite pattern. It could be your favorite color. And, of course, dealing with you, <laughs> we have these fancy paper goods. But that's fine. It sort of keeps it more fun. And then we're going to keep our menu simple as well. We just have our fried fish. We have a tossed green salad, everyone's favorite potato salad, these rolls, these Italian puffs. Remember how good those were. And this Tex-Mex dip, which everybody likes to eat and eat and eat. And then for dessert, we're going to involve the children. We're going to just get sugar cookie dough, and we'll do bowls of M&Ms and sprinkles, and let them just make their own cookies. Now, I'm sure, Holly, that you thought that they were going to be making those cookies on a regular old table. Yeah, of course. No, 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 I don't think so. We're going to have them in the lawn over where the badminton is and all the other games, and we are going to have them on a hot pink sheet. Wait, Beb, the kind of sheets that we sleep on? Exactly, oh, the yeah. kind of sheets that we sleep on. Just gonna and we're going to have, and you remember the cup holders that yeah. you use out yeah. by the beach? Sure. That you usually put a drink in? I do. Well, the kids are going to help do the flowers in those, and we're going to surround it, and they're going to have the most incredible spot to make the neatest cookies in the whole world. Oh, that sounds adorable. You know, this is a fun menu. It's easy. We have all the kids. This is the kind of party I like to throw. Let's go play badminton. Picking a theme for your party makes it so easy because you can follow it from the invitation to the decorations to the food. It's hot outside. I think we ought to take a trip to the Caribbean. I'm thinking sandy white beaches and beautiful breezes, palm trees, grass skirts. I really love to wow them with the invitation. So you just take a fish bowl that you get and inexpensively at the pet store Add a little gravel, put in a pretty ribbon around the side, and then cutouts of palm trees and fish. Now, you don't want to use real fish because if something happens to them, it's a bad omen for the party. So just use the cutouts. Then I love to add a card to go with it that you add with the goldfish bowl. Another great idea is to take a 35-cent box, wrap it with wonderful bright Caribbean-type ribbons, and a little crinkle paper, add a coconut cookie or something wonderful to put inside, and then tag it. This could either be a favor idea or it could be great for, a, for an invitation. I know Holly's planning a wonderful menu for us for our Caribbean dinner. I agree with Bev. I think it's more fun and it's really easier to plan a party around the theme. Okay, Caribbean. I think let's grill. And shish kebabs are a great choice to barbecue. You can make them ahead of time, and you can even buy them at the store put together. And then we'll let the men do all the grilling. And it's hot outside, so we have to think of something sort of refreshing to serve with it. So let's go with some salads. I have a tropical couscous salad, and couscous is as simple as just boiling water, and I use my tropical fruits. 
But what I'm going to show you today is a recipe that all my friends just die for, and it's so simple. It's a black bean and corn salad. I have here, I started with a can of black beans. And really, it's not necessary to buy dry beans, soak them, cook them for hours, because your taste is really the same. But what I do recommend doing is you want to take your beans and your can of beans, and you want to rinse them and drain them, because that will reduce the sodium. And also remember, beans add a little extra fiber and protein. And really, this salad, all we're going to do is just add our ingredients. We're going to use tomatoes. And when tomatoes are in season, which is from June to September, I always throw a couple of extras in because they're so good. But remember, don't put store your uh, tomatoes in the refrigerator. It's really better to leave them out on the counter. It'll maximize their flavor. And then we're just adding in corn. This is canned corn. And then we have some cilantro. And remember what I told you all about cilantro. This is a time you want to use it fresh, and it's found in the grocery section where the parsley is, and it's sold in a bunch. And I like to include red onions because I think they're a little sweeter, and I know Bev would approve of the color. And then our dressing is so simple. You see we're just adding everything. is a little lemon juice and a little olive oil to bind it together. Now, this is a recipe, again, you can make ahead, double, triple, and just leave it in the refrigerator. And I think the longer it sits, the better it gets. We have this done, our salads. Let's check and see what my buddy's doing out there with the flowers. I like to tie the look together with burlap and grass skirts. These are just pinned to the perimeter of the table. Doesn't matter if the pins show, just leave it. Nobody will be able to tell. I love to use these on both the buffet table and the drink table. And I've got a great idea for you to decorate those tables. We're going to go to the grocery store. And we're going to pick every color of pepper you can imagine that looks pretty. Yellow, green, red, orange, if you like. And then you want to make sure that they hold up straight when you put them down on the table, because it's going to be a vase. Then we're going to hollow out the inside, and we're going to put some water-soaked oasis in the middle, and then fill it with water. Next, we're going to add our bright-colored flowers every color of the rainbow, whatever you like. You might even have something growing in your garden that you could use. I like to serve buffet style for a Caribbean dinner, but I also really love for everyone to have a seat. We're going to create some wonderful shade for our guests by using bright colored umbrellas with a little bit of fabric covering the pole. I've used blue chargers for our plates and then we're going to add a cover so that our food won't have those pesky bugs in it. I've also used the peppers again that you'll see all over. We've used three bright colored ones. And then I also love to add a touch with a napkin. This is lime green. And I found these wonderful uh, chairs that kind of look like reminded me of the beach. So I thought that was a pretty touch. And then I really love to use hand blown glasses for a touch of elegance, a little touch of elegance. We've also added our favor boxes that we're going to have those wonderful coconut cookies in. And that reminds me, Holly's in the kitchen making that incredible dessert. And I'm going to show you how to make a watermelon centerpiece for the buffet. For dessert, Bev, we're going to have a tropical pizza. A pizza? Holly? Yeah, it's a dessert pizza. Oh, and okay. It, and a it's dessert even, pizza. I haven't heard of one. All right, well, and it's served cold. And it's an, also an easy recipe, too. All I've done here is I, on a pizza pan, so we're really using a real life pizza pan, I have sliced and baked sugar cookie dough, and I've patted it down, and you just bake it at 350 for about 10 to 12 minutes. Mm. Just let it cool, and we'll go on to stage two. Uh, and then this recipe is what I've used. It's fat-free cream cheese, a little sugar, and folded in some whipped topping. Two secret ingredients. I put a little coconut extract, which gives it that real tropical flavor. If you're not familiar with, top, with uh, coconut extract, you find it in the grocery store where you find vanilla, almond extract. You've just probably never used it before. It's a good thing to keep in your pantry. The next ingredient is a little grated orange rind. Now, you can find orange rind also in the grocery store, dried, but it really makes oh, a difference. Oh, this is the best. See, it, mm, just, it really it adds a, a burst of flavor to it. We put that on, and then you just decorate it with your tropical fruits. I've used mangoes and... Uh, mandarin oranges and pineapples. Even and kiwi and wonderful raspberries. Well, I think we and you can do anything, right? Absolutely, but whatever. In fact, there's times in the winter that I've used strawberries and berries and just changed it a little bit. And our last little step 
is um, just a little apricot preserves and a little orange juice that I heated in the microwave just till it all melted together. Could you add a little Blanc Marnier? Oh, I count on you. A yeah, little oh. tiny bit. Yeah, Grand Marnier is an orange liqueur. It would be absolutely wonderful in here. And then I'm just going to spoon this over. And this is such a tropical treat. Uh, oh, people just great. love it. And it's... Pizza's pleasing, uh, great pleaser for and everybody. And it's definitely served cold. We're not popping this back no. in the oven. No, and what we're going to do is pop it in the refrigerator, and mm. that way it's done. And when our guests arrive or when we're ready for dessert, we'll be able to serve it. More time for decorating. Oh, You're naturally. Ready for the watermelon that's, centerpiece? That's why I'm a good sidekick for you. I'm <laughs> quick and easy, and we can do all the decorating. That's right. Now, the next we're going to do, and this is going to go in the center of the buffet table, uh -huh. is we're going to take a wonderful watermelon. And if you can get one that stands up straight, you do, but if you can't, you just slice off now, the bottom. Now, wait, uh, do, what kind of shape do you want? You know, they come fat, they come skinny. Does you, that make a difference? It does, but you want it to look like a vase. Okay. So okay. that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get one more for shape than for taste or anything else. Oh, I can get Although those we shape. care about the taste. <laughs> right. So we're going to slice off the bottom just a little bit, and then we're going to also slice off the top and then hollow out the inside. And this is what you'll have when you slice the top off. So you just come down about that much. Okay, I will take this, and I love to eat watermelon. I'm sorry, I don't think so. Holly, it's a de decoration. Well, Bev, you've been taking all my food. I was about paying you back and taking yours. Well, you can have the inside of this when we oh, hollow it out. I'll wait, I'll wait. Again, we're going to hollow it out, and we're going to put the container inside uh -huh. so that the flowers won't wilt. And I've learned that. You always use a container because if you put your flowers in your apples or watermelons, they don't last. Exactly. I've been That's listening. That's right. You're a good girl. So now, here's our finished arrangement. And we stayed with all the tropical colors. You can use whatever you want. But I love the delphinium, the hot colors. And again, we have some even protea, which is a little bit of a Caribbean kind of flower. And then this holly is going to go down at the side. So that's going to look pretty. All, in all honesty, I do not know what any of those flowers are, but it is absolutely magnificent. I know everybody agrees. That's sweet. Okay, well, we're ready. We're going to go out and finish the tables. You get a lay. Oh. You get some maracas. And we're going to go put these favors. Count on, on you to carry table. out the theme. That's right. And we're ready to go. Holly, I think we are in the Caribbean. We've got our lays, and we've put some on the table for decoration. And all the food's prepared, and we had the guys do the grilling, so we have shish kebabs. I like to offer a choice of shish kebabs. We have a meat, we have a chicken, and we have a veggie, so everybody could be happy. So even those picky eaters get something they want. Absolutely. <laughs> and also, Bev, what I do, I keep parsley in my refrigerator at all times just for a real simple garnish, and then I use ingredients I have to add that just accent of color. Well, you know, speaking of color, I couldn't stand it. This is so, reminds me of the Caribbean and Holly, it matches your outfit. I'm color coordinated. And your salads. I think it just makes those just brighten up with a color beneath. I have a black bean and corn salad and we have our tropical couscous salad. It's warm outside. Salads are a great choice. They're not too heavy, but they're hearty enough to please everyone. And your tropical pizza that's on a pizza pan. I know. Keep serving simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. We have all the flowers to, to get everybody's eye. And look, all I do, I just have a pizza cutter and just let everybody cut whatever size portions they want. So if I just want a little bit, but then I want two or three more little bits, you think that'll work? I think that's fine, <laughs> Beth. <laughs> and then I love to use metal artists in your own town, or just artists. This is, these are some palm trees that are designed with Julia Yurkov. Beautiful. We've also done some small ones that take two or three little flowers. Bam. Two or three little flowers? <laughs> I think more like three or four are lots of flowers. In fact, this is absolutely incredible. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen this many flowers in a watermelon ever before. Do you think we'd find this in the Caribbean? I definitely do. <laughs> and the colors are just so beautiful. Uh, well, Holly, I think we need to get the CDs going, or we could have a real steel band. But I think we are ready to record. One of my favorite ways to entertain is with a decadent dessert party. We get to have friends over after the big symphony or a fundraiser where we're dressed to the nines. So we're going to pull out all the stops. I love to entertain in the formal dining room because most of the time we're in the den or in the kitchen. So this is a great special event. We're going to use our best silver, china, and crystal. But if you don't have that, just use the best things you have. I'm going to show you a little trick, a kind of unusual arrangement to do with your flowers because Holly is designing all of her fabulous desserts for the centerpiece. We're going to take a lipped vase and tie ribbons to the right and then to the left. 
and we're going to walk up and we're going to put it right here on the chandelier. As you can see, you put the flowers, you hang the vase first and tie it with a ribbon, and then you arrange the flowers in it. I've used wonderful peonies, roses, and some lisianthus that reflect the wonderful colors in the demitasse cups. I think while I'm finishing this arrangement, we'll go see what Holly's doing in the kitchen. Let's have a cheesecake. That's always everyone's favorite. I have this incredible white chocolate bundt cake. And then a trifle. I always include a trifle because they're easy to prepare. And you make them ahead of time, and they serve a crowd. So let's start with our trifle. A trifle really is an English dessert, and it's layers of cake that are doused with a liqueur, and then you layer it with custard and whipping cream. Well, I'm going to show you the Holly version of the trifle. And this recipe is the fantastic trifle. And of all the trifle recipes in my books, this is the one that they go, oh my god, I have to have this recipe. And it's probably the easiest one as well. All we're doing is starting out with an angel food cake that I've cut in squares. It doesn't matter how big or small, it's going to all get mixed together. And then we have a chocolate sauce. And the chocolate sauce just made with cocoa and milk and sugar. And then I added a little coffee liqueur to give it that little spark. We're going to just put that in there. And try not to get it all over everything, like I usually do. There's our chocolate sauce. And then our next layer, our next ingredient, I should say, is instant vanilla pudding. And you just mix that. You don't even need a mixer with a whisk with uh, milk. Now, I use skim milk. And this is a time if you use regular milk to switch to low fat or to skim. And we're just going to do all this together, like so. Doesn't matter. We're going to mix it all together so it doesn't have to be neat. And last, but surely not least, are chocolate-covered toffee bars. We're going to sprinkle this in. And then I usually like to save a little for the uh, top. No one's going to ever miss one anyway. So now what we've got to do is just mix it all together. And then, pretend it's mixed, presto, we have our first layer. Now, I don't want you all to get caught up on the layers. Everybody says everything has to be very neat. It doesn't. Nobody's ever going to know the difference. We have our layer. Then we're going to put a layer of bananas and just spread those. So. And then your next layer is whipped topping. All right? We just spread that. And then we're just going to repeat the layers. I always do like to serve a trifle in a glass bowl so you can see how pretty it looks. And then we're just going to finish it up, sprinkle the toffee bars, unless I eat them all, and that's it. Well, let's go check what Bev's doing with all these gorgeous flowers for our dining room. I love arranging flowers on the sideboard. It's just a little different twist from the table. Again, we're going to reflect a lot of the colors that are in the painting in the flower arrangements. Now, normally, you would be serving water from this pitcher, but we're putting a huge array of wonderful Casablanca lilies, some peonies, and lisianthus. If you can't afford the most expensive lilies, like these Casablanca lilies, just use Asia Asiatic lilies or something that you pick from your garden, some, whatever you can afford. That's absolutely fine. I also love to use these different containers. Now, this is just a sugar container. You could take a creamer or a sugar container, and you're going to put flowers in this. Again, you might want to use the Oasis to make it easier for you to arrange your flowers. But remember, if you use that, you want to take the flowers out in a couple of days because it'll pit your silver if you don't take it out in time. But again, just put it in another arrangement. I can't wait to see Holly's decadent desserts. I'm going to show you my two other favorite desserts now. This is the white chocolate bundt cake, and it is so incredibly delicious. You know what? I just keep all my ingredients in the house, in my pantry. I have white chocolate instant pudding, a yellow cake mix, white chocolate chips and other ingredients, and it has this almond glaze made with powdered sugar and almond extract. We like to serve it with the raspberry sauce, but most of the time, I just keep it for whenever I need a cake. But we're going to dress it up and put it in the dining room. And the other dessert we're going to do are uh, little strawberry cheesecake squares. They're going to add a lot of color to our table, and they're a wonderful pickup. And everybody, as I said, loves cheesecake. So this recipe, all I've done for the crust, it has oatmeal, a little sugar, powdered sugar, and flour and margarine. And I'm going to add two tablespoons of orange juice. And that way, we're using a little less margarine. And that's going to be our crust. Just mix it together. You can just use a fork. And here's our crust. Bop, bop. We patted it in. 
and I baked it at 350 just for about 10 minutes. Our next layer is a cream cheese layer. Now, cheesecakes usually are very heavy. So the way I'm going to reduce the calories and fat in this is I've used ricotta cheese and a light cream cheese. We have it with sugar. And again, I'm adding a tablespoon of orange juice just to give it that citrus flavor. I think the citrus orange juice complements the um, strawberries that we're going to put on top, too. So this, as soon as you get out of the oven, you don't even have to let it cool. We'll do our next layer, like so. We don't want to waste any of this batter because it's so good. And this is a great dessert because you can make it ahead of time. It disciplines you to be well prepared. Because most of the time in a cheesecake recipe, this is where it is. You stop it, you bake it in the oven, then when it comes down and cools, you have to put your topping on. But in this dessert recipe, all you do is you make your topping ahead of time. And all I've done here is a frozen package of strawberries and unsweetened pineapple and its juice and a little cornstarch to thicken it. And then all we're going to do, we're going to spoon it on now. And then we're going to bake it at the oven at about 350 for about 15 minutes, really just till your cheesecake's uh, done, uh, all set. And then you put it in the refrigerator, and it's ready for you to serve. I can't wait for you to see this, and I wish you could taste it. Well, let's go on and see what Bev's doing, the finishing touches on our dining room, because I've got to go get dressed. We just returned from the gala, and everybody's coming here for dessert. Bev, it's so much fun to dress up. It really is, but you've outdone yourself with this table. The beautiful desserts, Holly, tell me about the trifle. Well, first, I have to say, I've never seen flowers hanging from my chandelier, and they're absolutely <laughs> fabulous. It's a different twist. And now we have our desserts. None of them took too much effort. We have a trifle, which everybody loves. Our strawberry cheesecakes are just wonderful pickups. I love to accent with fresh fruit. And our white chocolate bundt cake, anytime I'm serving a cake, I always like to have it pre-sliced. That way it's easier for the guests to get a piece of it. And I accident that with raspberry sauce. Holly, I love that you put this on a silver plateau. You know, we've got silver, china, nothing really needs to match. It's all really fun to mix it all together. Oh, it is, and I love to use my silver service. And sometimes you wonder, how am I going to keep that coffee hot? And it's what you want to do is fill your urns with hot water. And just before the guests arrive, empty out the hot water and put in your coffee. And we talked about a variety of coffees, but you always want to include a decaf nowadays. Well, you know, you've got all these very interesting ones. You've got decaf, hazelnut. I've got a great way to identify them for our guests. We'll just take a lemon, put a little slice in it, you put a card in, and then put it on a little leaf. Cute, cute, cute. And that's a great idea. And you know what else I love to do that's so much fun is to serve your condiments in something a little different. And I've used a deviled egg dish, or you could use an oyster dish, whatever, and put chocolate chips, brown sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, whatever you want to do. We have everything ready, so before our guests come, let's do a toast. Oh, I perfect. To food, fun, and friends. Louisiana Fish Fry Products, bringing the taste of Louisiana home. By Bomber Foods, the makers of Crystal brand products, a complete line of sauces and fine products that bring out the inherent goodness of every meal every day. That's Bomber Foods, makers of Crystal brand products.